This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Y you know why you're here. You read the title. A bunch of games. 60, 70, I don't know what I put down there yet. Games still coming to Nintendo Switch this year. 2020, let's face it. It stinks. It's a stinky year, <laughs> not a great year. <laughs> and so I really wanted to make this video just to give you guys something to be excited for, to look forward to this year. Here's what I did. I went to Nintendo Switch's official website. I filtered all games coming in 2020 by release date. There was over like a hundred games. I haven't just taken every Switch game coming out from now to the end of the year, including shovelware and a bunch of crap no one wants to play. No, I painstakingly went through each one of those games and I took the good ones. The ones I felt like actually looked fun, games that I think you guys might enjoy, and games that actually, honestly, look really incredible. So just do me a favor, <laughs> sit back, relax, and watch the entire thing from start to fi Don't skip around looking for your favorite games. They're all good. So, <laughs> so just sit back and have a good time. Maybe subscribe. Like half of you that watch my videos aren't subscribed. What's up with that? <laughs> Drop a like if you wanna, and I'll see you at the end. And also throughout the entire thing. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> okay, so everyone's really excited for the new Tony Hawk games, understandably, but don't forget, we also have a couple of skating games coming to Switch this year. First, we have Skater XL, which they say is the evolution of skateboarding games and moves the genre towards impressive physics-based gameplay. We'll see how that turns out. We also have Skate Birds. Skating games galore, yet still no Skate 4. Oh, that rhyme. In this one, you're a bird that can skate. I mean, do I have to say anymore? Rogue Company is a game coming to Switch by Hi Res Studios. Hi Res has already put a ton of free games on Switch, and Rogue Company looks like a battle royale kind of game. The animations are very stiff, but I do think it looks pretty fun. Bacon Switch, the couch co-op PvP game for up to four players. This game obviously gives off heavy overcooked vibes, but every time I watch the gameplay, I am totally confused by what's going on. That being said, I look forward to playing this one with Kim. I hope we like it. <laughs> Minico's Night Market is an action simulation game. Discover the secrets behind the town while managing your daily activities, completing various jobs, venturing on whimsical quests, and crafting particular items in preparation for the weekly night market. There's about 20 hours of story-based gameplay that's open-ended for endless replayability. Gleamlight is a beautiful 2D action game that gives me Hollow Knight vibes, and that is not a bad thing. I'm adding Dungeon Defenders to this list. It's a co-op tower defense action RPG with bright, colorful visuals. Could go either way on this one, but I, I think it looks fun. The Survivalist is still coming in 2020. It's a spin-off sequel to the very popular escapist games. Quantum League. This is one I have my eye on. It's absolutely baffling how this game plays. I can see this either being really fun or super frustrating. It's kind of hard to explain, but each round is played on time loops with you and one other player, creating multiple instances of each other, going for kills and ring captures. It's bananas, and I hope that it's fun. Arguably the first big one on the list, uh, No More Heroes 3 is still coming this year. We don't know when, and we had a very confusing trailer for it recently that looked awesome, but what the heck, obviously very excited. Other than the Hunter Hunter characters, I didn't love Jump Force when it initially released, but if you're excited to battle it out as Goku vs Naruto, you can do that when Jump Force comes to Switch. I am dead is ironically a very charming puzzle adventure game with what I'm assuming has dark undertones <laughs> since, you know, it's called I Am Dead. <laughs> I'm actually really excited for this one. Sukuna, Rice and Ruin, I'm bad at pronouncing things. Sukuna combines side-scrolling action with deep crafting and farming simulation. Also, it's so visually stunning, I could cry. <laughs> this one is just one of my absolute favorites on the list and I can't wait to play it. Okay. Again, I'm adding Fuser to the list, even though it could go either way, because I think it looks really relaxing and just chill, actually. It's a DJ music mixing game loaded full of actually pretty fire tracks, and you can mix and match the beats, vocals, and do whatever it is that DJs do up there. Press buttons, oh. Just check out the trailer and listen to how it plays. It's very interesting. Oh, the Red Lantern. This is a story-driven roguelike adventure game set in an Alaskan tundra with an absolutely heart-wrenching trailer that has me buying this game just so I can find out if 
that good boy is okay. He better be okay, or else I'm getting a refund. Roki is another gorgeous adventure game filled with strange locations and even stranger creatures. Also, there's a giant adorable fox, so let me find my wallet. <laughs> Oh, Axiom Verge 2, the long-awaited sequel to Axiom Verge, is still on the way to Switch this year. Very exciting. Next, we have Inmost. It's a story-driven puzzle platformer with more layers of atmosphere slopped on top than a butter on a biscuit in the south. Trust me, I live here. It's kind of gross. They just pour that stuff on. What I'm trying to say is it looks really cool. Ah, <laughs> Double Kick Heroes. It's a metal rhythm shooter coming to Nintendo Switch first. And I mean... I don't have enough money for this. <laughs> I hadn't heard of this one either, Windbound. It's a great looking exploration game with strange creatures, hunting and crafting, and will hopefully still launch this year because it looks good. You guys remember when I made a video about that game that looked eerily a lot like Breath of the Wild? Well, it turns out that game is Genshin Impact and it's actually on the way to Switch. Also, there's been a lot more developing with that game and we've seen a lot more and it, it really does look like its own amazing thing and I can't wait to play it. Samurai Jack the show might have ended, but Samurai Jack the video game is still on its way. It's an action-adventure game that, dare I say, actually looks pretty decent. I'm terrified of sharks. Thankfully, in Maneater, I will be the shark. And while it looks absolutely ridiculous, it still looks very terrifying. <laughs> Boyfriend Dungeon is still coming to Switch and... Hold up a minute. They even got my abs perfect. Uh, do I need a lawyer here? <laughs> I'm not trying to say I look like that, but I look like that. <laughs> Moving on. Spirit Spiritfarer is a cute game about dying. That's what they wrote, man. I, I don't know. Oh, this next one could be huge for you JRPG fanatics out there. Bravely Default 2. I am actually excited for this one. However, while I was researching for this video that you are currently watching, I only just found out that it's not being made by the same dev team that made all the other Bravely games. They actually passed this one on to a, a pretty much unknown brand new studio that before this game has only made like two mobile games that weren't received very well. Don't know what's going on there. Let's hope for the best for this Bravely Default 2. Cyanide and Happiness is taking a stab at the video game realm with a game very reminiscent to the recent South Park games. Interesting. I think by far the best collector's edition limited run games has done is for Golf Story. Well, I look forward to seeing what limited run might do with the sequel to Golf Story, Sports Story. It's a game about sports. Yay, sports! I am such a wimp. Like, it goes past my fear of sharks. I am just a, a big baby. I installed Blair Witch onto my Xbox the day it released, and I took three steps in the game, noped the heck out, and deleted the game from my hard drive. Well, I can do it all over again this year because Blair Witch is on the way to Switch. Hey, Blair Switch. Hey, how's it going? Thank you so much. I'm talking to you, whoever you are, that listened to my request and you just sat back, relaxed, you've been vibing this whole time, you ain't skipping around. Thank you, I really do appreciate it. Let's keep going. <laughs> you see this? You see it? I'll make it bigger. I'll, I'll expand it all the way across the screen. This game is called Blue Fire. And it's gone. Yeah, I'm buying it too, that one looks awesome. My true fans will know that I love pirate battleship games. It's a secret little <laughs> nostalgic love I have. So it's pretty safe to say that I am excited for Sail 4. The gameplay looks pretty good and it's just pretty. It looks really pretty. Holy freaking Joy-Cons, Batman! Baldo and the Guardian Owls is high on my list of games that I cannot wait for. It shoots out major Nino Kuni vibes and has a world I just cannot wait to explore. I, I'm excited for this one, can you tell? If you've ever wanted to brawl it out with characters from Darkest Dungeon, Dead Cells, Owl Boy, Axiom Verge, Steam World, Flint Hook, and many more, then Bounty Battle is the all-in-one indie fighter for you. Eldest Souls. Non-surprising by the name, it's a Souls-like game. Very challenging, pixel art boss rush game. Oh, next we have Super Liminal. I don't know about all of you, but this one has 100% of my attention. I love this mind-bending concept of forced perspective puzzles filled with optical illusions. 
I don't, I don't know, I like this kind of stuff. From the creators behind Journey, we have another groundbreaking social adventure set to warm your hearts. It's called Sky Children of the Light. Enjoy beautiful- You know what, I had you sold at the creators from Journey, didn't I? Yeah, I thought so. Moving on! Fogs! <laughs> uh, I'll be honest, I put this one on the list purely because it reminds me of Cat Dog. Alone in the world, there's a little cat dog! <laughs> it does look fun. Oh, <laughs> uh, what the holy heck? Eastwood! I hadn't heard of this one, but brought to you by Chucklefish Games, the same masterminds behind games like Wargroove, Starbound, and even another game on this list already, Inmost. I am not sure who taught these guys how to do pixel art, but those people need a raise. And then Chucklefish needs a raise. Eastwood looks phenomenal, I can't wait. And then, the one that we heard about like two days ago for me, I don't know, for you, uh, Paper Mario the Origami King. <coughs> Yo, seriously dude? Uh. I mean, we to do all these fun sponsor spots together and then what you lock me in the closet you never call me up anymore what's going on no man it's nothing to do with you it is these back and forths that we have it's really not easy to edit these <sighs> well you know what is easy i don't know i i'm gonna guess making, making a, website a website with squarespace, with squarespace. Yeah. squarespace is the all-in-one platform for making beautiful websites it's super easy <laughs> He is right. I already made myself a website using Squarespace. And it was really just as easy as picking a cool template, then moving a few things how I wanted them, adding some text, and bada bing, bada boom. Now people can find my merch and my videos right there on the website. Yeah, and you should make your own website too, whether it's for your business or own personal reasons. I mean, I made a website on Squarespace so I could sell my collection of used towels. Why would anyone want to buy a used towel? Hmm? Oh, I don't know, but I've been tracking my sales through the website. Sold nothing? L literally nothing, yeah. This is why I kept them in the closet. Look, just go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com forward slash beat-em-ups to get 10% of your first purchase of a domain or website. Thank you, Squarespace, for giving me a reason to live! Do you want to get back to the video? I'd like to get back to the live. video. All right. Uh, Paper Mario the Origami King. It, it, I'm excited. I look forward to playing a new Paper Mario, and I hope the combat is better than Color Splash. <laughs> I hope you're an adult, or have an adult's permission, because Catherine, <laughs> because Catherine the mature action-adventure puzzler is making its way to Switch on July 7th. It's a really quirky romp of a game with addictive puzzles and 13 different endings. Empire of Sin is a strategy game coming in spring that's hopefully a lot more fun than it looks. The Legend of Ze- Oh, hold on, wait a second, that doesn't sound right. The Legend of Heroes Trial of Cold Steel 3. One heck of a title for hopefully one heck of a JRPG. Uh, this one will kill some time in isolation, that's for sure. I have been saying this since it was announced, but Minecraft Dungeons actually looks pretty good. <laughs> it's a dungeon crawler set in the Minecraft world and I'm down. I'm, 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 I look forward to it. Don't at me, okay? I think it looks good. I also like Minecraft. World War Z is coming to Switch. This game is so much fun to play with friends. It's like Left 4 Dead, but with just a stupid amount of zombies. I remember Mafia 2. It's been a while. Uh, I look forward to replaying it on Switch. I remember it being, um, not exactly child friendly. <laughs> Brigadine, the legend of Rune Runa Sia. I don't freaking know. <laughs> this game looks a bit beyond me, but if you're a hardcore strategy fanatic, this game is an endless war grand strategy simulator that looks kinda like Fire Emblem, but cranked up to 1000. Comes out June 25th. Do with that what you will. The Almost Gone is a cute, relaxed little puzzle game consisting of these small dioramas and a bunch of point and clicking. And that's coming June 25th. Oh, how many have I got left? <laughs> I've been up here a while. I think I wrote too much about each one. <laughs> Brutalizing Demons is fun to do on the go, as we learned with the initial Doom on Switch and Doom Eternal. And still set to come out at some point this year. I don't know when. Oh, speaking of lighting a bonfire and just throwing your Switch straight into it, Crisis Remastered is on the way to the system. You know, the game that's notoriously set computers ablaze for the last decade? Yeah, they're gonna try and remaster that and then cram it on the Switch. That should be fun. For years, the retro gaming community thought that they had a fun little hidden gem of a game that no one else knew about, but secretly pretty much everyone did know about. SpongeBob! 
Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated is on the way to Switch. It's that old game, but remastered and looking fantastic. And oh, I guess it ain't a secret no more. Speaking of hidden gems, the next one is Burnout Paradise. That's also, I'm pretty sure, what a lot of people considered as a hidden gem because it's an actual really fun driving game. And as someone who doesn't like driving games, that's cool. Two of my all-time favorite point and clicks, Whispered World and Deponia. Well, the creators of those games started here with their debut adventure game, Edna and Harvey. And that game is coming to Switch June 17th. There's a few turn-based strategy games on this list today. I'm down for that. I like them. And the next one is 1971 Project Helios. That one's June 9th. Deadly Premonition 2, which I forgot about while I was making the video and I'm now adding this one in at the last second. What's better than paying full price for one game? Oh, <laughs> paying full price for 51 games? <laughs> the way Nintendo's been pushing and promoting Clubhouse 51, you'd think it's their next big IP next to Mario and Splatoon. I don't know how well this one's going to do, but it is 51 games crammed into one title. I'm sure there's at least a few good ones on there. And Switch players do have a tough choice that day, June 5th, because the same day we're also getting Outer Worlds. We can finally play that on the go. Also, I've had it since release, but I decided not to play it and wait for the Switch version. Was that a good idea? I'll find out on June 5th. Hopefully it plays well. Wingspan is a relaxing strategy game about birds for one to five players. I don't know, man. That's what they wrote on their website. It <laughs> Wow, Ghost of Sushi- Oh, sorry, wait, hold on a second. Ghost of a Tail. <laughs> I'd never heard of this one before, but look, you play as an adorable little mouse. Look at the way he waddles, so cute. This one's been out on Steam for a couple years, so you can go check it out before you buy it. It's an action RPG with stealth elements, and it's supposed to be pretty hard, even compared to the Souls games. Summer of Mara has you taking care of an island, exploring the ocean as you farm and craft your own adventure. Ah, the amount I know about Warhammer 4000 I could write on a postage stamp, but my friends seem to love it and it's coming to Switch. So here it is on the list. <laughs> Dreamscaper is an ARPG roguelike blending elements from brawlers, top-down shooters, and dungeon crawlers. The visuals here are also very interesting and drawing me in, so I'm, I'm gonna give this one a shot. Then, if Ninjala manages to release and not get pushed back again on June 24th, kinda has Splatoon and ARMS vibes, kind of. It's a crazy new battle game that honestly looks really fun, but I wouldn't know for sure because their crappy beta test was broken, but I'm still gonna get it. Oh, okay, we're almost through it. Gosh, we're at May now. So all the ones I'm about to prattle off, they're all for this month, hopefully. Thanks for watching this far. Again, if you haven't skipped up to this point, oh, you get like five gold stars from me and a special prize. What's that special prize? Well, I hadn't thought about it. I, didn't, I don't even know why I said it. <laughs> May 29th. That is a big day and it's coming up pretty soon. Because we not only get the Bioshock collection, we also get the Borderlands collection and we get XCOM 2 and we get Xenoblade Chronicles all on the same day. And those are the ones that you just probably know about. There's also a few more little indies hiding around the corner. So there's one called Little Misfortune and don't let the art style fool you for this one. It's for mature audiences because, oh, creepy. And then one called Adam's Adventure, which it looks like a budget Uncharted game and it got mixed reviews on Steam, but I'm just gonna throw it in here and screw it. <laughs> May 21st, we have The Persistence, which was an absolutely terrifying PlayStation VR game that I refused to play. Brutal uh, horror and roguelike, meaning every time you play it's different, so you never know what to expect. No thank you. And then a game called Resolution that looks awesome. And I even had to double check it wasn't made by the same team who made Hyper Light Drifter because I'm getting some serious vibes here. Oh, my wallet is screwed, but I have my eyes set on this one as well. And last, we made it. Last! <laughs> Depending on when this video comes out and when you watch this, I'm gonna throw it on the list here because Platinum Games themselves, which was a really cool moment for me because I'm a huge fan of Platinum Games and everything they do, they emailed me and sent me a code early for, I've had it a while now, Wonderful 101. Really exciting. So that comes out on June 19th. Check it out if you missed it on Wii U or even if you liked it on Wii U. Oh, we did it! <laughs> we made it all the way through. Please! Let me know which ones you're excited for 
down below. And of course, as always, as you always do, because I can never escape it, it's inevitable. Let me know which one I missed down below so I can be upset about it later. <laughs> so all of you who watched this whole thing, thank you so much. That means a lot to me. If you had a good time here and you're one of those lurkers who aren't subscribed yet, and I know there's a lot of you, I'd appreciate it getting close to a million. That's it from me. I'm gonna go lie down now. I like you, I love you. And Boyfriend Dungeon, uh, my lawyers will be in contact <laughs> very, very briefly. Okay, bye.